Hello everyone and welcome to the third of these resource videos for Physics 117. We're into the course now, it's up to full cruising speed and so in this video what, what I want to talk about is some advice on how to get the most out of studying. So this video is going to teach you absolutely nothing about physics, in fact most of these resource videos are, are, are physics free zones, um, but it should introduce you to a concept that you might not have heard about called metacognition, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, and really what we want to try and do is give you some advice on how to make the most out of studying, uh, the time that you spend studying in this course, and it, you never know, it may well be useful for studying in other courses as well. So I'm gonna start this video by asking you another question again. What's the most important factor in successful learning. There's five choices there. Which one do you think is the most important? You might think they're all important, but which one's the most important? If you need a little bit more time, just pause the video here. So it turns out that the correct answer is actually number five, the last choice, what you think about while studying because this is the only one of these five that promotes something called deep processing. Turns out you learn better with deep processing even if you didn't set out intending to learn. Now this question isn't mine, it comes from a series of videos that have been put together by a psychology professor called Stephen Chu from Samford University. And I've got links to his video playlist for these five short segments in the description for this. When he asks this question, Stephen Chu actually goes through each of these answers and explains why the other four are wrong using a, a classic psychology experiment from the 1960s by Thomas Hyde and James Jenkins. And if you're curious about finding more about, you know, maybe you really thought that the intention and desire to learn was the most important thing that you could do, or, or, or the time that you spend, it's, it, surely it's time on task. If you want to find out more about how this classic psychology experiment sort of debunks all of these, uh, then the link's in the, uh, in the video description. As I said, this... Uh, the question was taken from, from Stephen Chu's video and he's prepared a series of short snippets on beliefs that make you fail or succeed. And this is a screen grab from the, uh, from the first episode and I, I love the title of this. Beliefs that make you stupid. Beliefs about learning that are not true. And again, this video emphasizes or, or, or debunks these, these beliefs or these myths and some of these Beliefs about learning that aren't true include things like learning is a fast process. It's not. It's slow and it's often difficult and it requires effortful struggle. Um, learning is, is really about how well you can keep facts and information in your head. And, and if I want to be a great student of physics, all I need to do is know lots and lots of facts and things. Uh, it turns out that's not the case either. It's really about how you make connections and you organize your knowledge into big picture concepts and ideas. Um, another couple of, couple of myths, if you like. Learning is, being good at learning is, is really a matter of inborn talent. You've either got it or you, or you haven't. It turns out that's not true. And with effortful practice, most people can significantly get better at, at learning something. Uh, and the fourth one, um, and I'm guilty of this as well, is thinking that you're really good at multitasking, right? Thinking about it's, it's okay if you have your email open when you're trying to solve a, a problem or, you know, think about what you're going to talk about in class next week. Uh, it turns out, again, from psychology experiments, that humans really aren't very good at multitasking. And this one particularly uh, has relevance for you, for when you're studying, 
I know it's really, really tempting to keep your phone there and these things are designed to distract us, right? So when it buzzes, it's, it's much more interesting to flip it over and see who's texting you uh, or to keep a chat window open when you're trying to prepare for your test next week. But humans aren't very good at, at multitasking. Um, so Stephen Chu's videos, this, this week's video is fairly short. There's only a couple more slides. So the main take home from this week's video is go and watch Stephen Chu's videos because they're really, really good. Underpinning a lot of what he's talking about is this idea called metacognition, which is really defined as an awareness and an understanding of one's own thought processes. It's being meta about your own cognition. You can think of it as thinking about your own learning. Or more specifically, being aware of your own level of understanding. And in some cases, that might be lack of understanding about a topic or a concept. So you can almost think of yourselves as doing two things as you work through a week's worth of material on angular momentum. One is doing the problems and, and solving the problems for the, the, the homework or the tutorial test or whatever it is we set you. And then there's this process going on above this, which is the metacognitive process of you constantly asking yourself, how well do I understand this? How do I know? What can I do if I don't understand how that relates to, uh, to that? Being metacognitively aware or having well-developed metacognitive habits is something that um, experts in things can do really, really well, even almost subconsciously or, or, or without being aware that they're actually doing it. You've probably all seen examples of people doing things where they're so good at it that they just make it look effortless, whether it's musical performance or sport or something like that. These are experts in their field. They got there by becoming more aware of their own performance and shortcomings, being more metacognitively aware. Um, so, you know, it's an easy thing for me to talk about and say you should become more metacognitively aware. Um, but what are some practical strategies for what you can do in this course to support your own metacognitive development? And here are a few. There may be others. Um, the first one is generate your own questions. And that can be, you know, that can actually be problems, right? That you invent and try and solve. It can also be generating questions as you work through material. Like, how does this relate to that? What would happen if? It, it's sort of pushing the boundaries of what you know beyond thinking about the facts or the formula or the, the equation that's, uh, that's written down. So this idea of, of asking questions to make connections between different parts of the uh, different parts of the course, we're presenting this course in a sort of linear week by week fashion. That's not how the concepts relate to each other. So think about how you can make connections. Um, practicing, I think I've said practice in every one of these videos, but practice applying your understanding of, con of concepts, which is doing problems. And if you get stuck, that's where you then ask yourself, well, you know, what's happened here? How can I get back on track with this, uh, with this problem? And, and a neat idea, though people are often very, very uncomfortable about this because they've been schooled thinking the most important part of tackling a physics problem is getting to the final answer. Well, yes, that is important, but Another way you can approach it is practice identifying how to solve problems even if you don't work them through to an answer, right? So practice mapping your route between the problem statement and the answer. Map it out even if you don't go all the way along. Get to the point where you say, okay, now I have the equations, I need to solve for x. Right? If you need the practice at the math, do the math as well. But 
if you've only got a fixed amount of time, sometimes spending a bit of that time thinking about how you would solve a problem rather than actually solving it as well uh, can be a valuable way to, uh, to try and support this kind of stuff. So there we go. Um, and the other thing to say is don't feel you have to do all of these in isolation, right? So talk to us, talk to your peers, talk to your TAs, post on the discussion forum because collectively it's a lot easier to help uh, develop some of these skills. So that's it for, for this week, fairly short. Um, the, the main piece of advice is go and watch Stephen Chu's videos because they're really good. <laughs>